Hello, so today we have a new amplifier, well, new old amplifier on the test bench. Um, it's also a tube amplifier. It's a push-pull amplifier and this is just a mono. So I have two of these. So let's have a look at it. If we take the cover off here. So um, unfortunately it didn't come with any tubes and it's pretty dirty but it seems to be just some dust on top. Um, so we have two output tubes here. So it says it will take either KT88 or EL34 tubes. And here we have 12AT7 and 12AU7. So that must be our preamp on our phase inverter tube. And then we have some switches over here. So it says pentode mode and triode mode. So that is basically, I guess, just gonna reconfigure the grid on our two output tubes. Or yeah, not not all the grids, but some of the grids. And then we have a selector here for whether we have EL thirty four or KG eighty eight. Um, very simple. So we're gonna have a power transformer, output transformer. We have some output tabs here. 4 ohm, 8 ohm and on the front there's nothing on the back we have input so it's only it's only a power power amplifier so we have phono input here some mystery switch I don't know what that does we have our mains input and what appears to be a power switch so, so far so good. So of course I'm gonna need some tubes before I can actually test, see whether it works. So I do believe I have a set of EL34s, I think reasonably matched, it should work in this amplifier. And 12AU7, I should have one as well. 12AT7, yeah, I'm sure I have all the tubes, so. Um, I think I'm just going to clean it up a little bit so it doesn't mess everything up and we can try have a look inside and see what it looks like. So interestingly the very last capacitors here so it says 450 volt 100 microfarad so but they appear to be uh, dual capacitors as in we actually have two capacitors in one because see here minus plus plus so but still these are quite large for only being a hundred microfarad at 450 volts so um, they are probably pretty old so I think I'm gonna do a test on these just to see if they're okay okay so I've taken the back cover off here so we can have a quick look inside so see the mains come in here goes through our switch goes to our Power switch goes to our uh, power transformer, and then we have various voltages coming out here. So everything is on a single board here. We have our output transformer over here, our output tabs here. Um, it looks like there might have been someone in here already adding some capacitors. Not sure if those are original or not. Anyway, they probably don't do any harm, but it's probably a good idea to just have a quick check on all the capacitors. So over here we have these two large rectifying capacitors. Um, they are indeed dual capacitors, so I'll I'll do a check on those just to see if they're okay. There's a small. 0.3 microfarad in parallel here uh, but the first problem I see is that I don't know if you can see that but the ground connection here from our power connector so it's not connected to anything so that's that's not great especially when you have a metal uh, chassis like this uh, 
this ground connection should really be securely uh, connected to the chassis. I don't know why they haven't done that. Um, very strange. So I'll I'll definitely change that so we get a good ground connection. And well, let me just try zoom in so we can have a closer look at that. So you can see here, it's not connected to anything, not so good. And then we have our mystery switch on the back here, um, doesn't do anything, don't know why it's there, perhaps someone wanted to do some modification or something, but it's definitely not doing anything. Um, besides that it looks fairly simple. So we have our tube switches here, tube type selector and our uh, triode mode selector and we have some different resistors on here. So personally I'm not a big fan of making amplifiers really flexible with tubes and different modes. and. Uh, I really prefer when people just, the ones designing the amplifier, just make it the best they can with a specific configuration. Because if you have different types of tubes, you're always going to have some uh, compromising on impedance of the output transformer, the voltages you're supplying to your tubes, etc, etc. So another thing that's a little bit sketchy is the fuse over here so it's just soldered in the air uh, not the greatest solution plenty of space on the back plate here to add a proper proper fuse holder but I'll probably just leave it as it is so yeah there's definitely been some work done here see this capacitor here has been changed or added at some point. Don't know if there's a problem with the design or why someone did that. Anyway, besides that it looks quite okay. So let's test some capacitors just to check. Okay, so I've hooked up my impedance analyzer to uh, these capacitors here. So it, they are a little bit peculiar choice of capacitors because they're all so there's two capacitors in one in each of these and they're just all in parallel and then we have a small 330 nanofarad uh, in parallel as well um, I, I guess that they simply chose these capacitors because they're really big because we're only going to get about 400 microfarad out of it. Um, comparison, a modern uh, 680 microfarad, okay this is only 400 volt, these are 450 but um, size comparison, this has got more capacitance than these two combined so I think they were probably chosen because they look really cool. Anyway, um, looking at the plot here, so we can see the ESR is actually looking okay. Um, ESR is the same as RS. So, and the slightly strange wiggle we see at 1.4 megahertz is caused by paralleling with this smaller value capacitor here. Anyway, they look okay. No need to do anything there. Okay, and I've added a ground connection here. So it's screwed in here together with the power transformer. So it's got a good connection to the whole uh, metal chassis here. Um, that should be a lot safer in case something happens inside. I am considering, instead of having this fuse, 
soldered in, flapping around in here. I have these little um, fuse holders here uh, designed for chassis mount. I could possibly just remove this little uh, mystery switch that really that absolutely does nothing. Just enlarge the hole a little bit and put one of these in here. Um, I might do it. It might not be worth the effort. Okay, I've opened up the second amplifier here in our stereo set. I've made the small ground wire modification uh, for safety. And besides that, I mean, they're pretty much identical uh, on everything. So that's good. I don't actually think they've been modified in any way from original. One thing that's interesting is that the power transformer only got two secondary windings. So one is going to be for our B plus and the other one is going to be for our filaments. So the two blue ones here go to the filaments. We've got some big traces on the circuit board here going to the other tube. And it appears it's only got two diodes. I can't see those. They're on the other side of the uh, circuit board for rectification and then we go to our uh, filter capacitors over here then we go to our output transformer um, so we don't have a winding for a negative bias voltage so instead we have these resistors here um, for dropping dropping some voltage from the uh, cathode so it will be raised up uh, above, above uh, ground level. So the switching here uh, between the two different sets of resistors here is actually the switching between uh, KT88 uh, tubes and EL34. So if we try to measure, these look like I think 20 watt resistors, something like that. 10, 20 watt. So that would be 470 ohm. And the other one is 680. I think. Yeah. 677. Anyway, it is probably nominal value 680 ohm. So, I think it's time to get some tubes in there and try power it up and see what happens. Because the good thing about tube amplifiers is that as long as the tubes are working and the transformers are working, uh, they're very, very easy to fix. If anything, it's not working. But I already checked the capacitors, so... Uh, very likely they're going to work just fine.